Hello, I'm JW. Today we're going to look at the wiring regulations again, and more specifically the 18th edition, which is this blue one. This is the one which is effective from January 2019, and obviously that is replacing the existing yellow one. Of course, it's the one that's currently in use, uh, the 17th edition Amendment 3. So we're going to have a look uh, in some more detail as to what uh, some of the more relevant changes are between the yellow one and, of course, the new blue one. And we're going to do several parts, so in this part we're going to have a look at uh, parts 1 and 2 in the regulations, and then of course later date we'll have a look at the later parts as well. Now what we're comparing between here is this one, which is the yellow one. This is the Amendment 3 version of the 17th edition, and this is applicable currently. And then this is the new one, the 18th one, which of course is applicable from January 2019, although you can still buy this at the moment, so... Uh, also allowing people to get it before the actual date it's implemented. And we're going to be looking at the main differences between the two. And we're certainly not going to be looking at every single difference, because if we have a look inside, I'll just highlight some of the uh, issues that are existing with this item. Now, uh, a lot of the stuff in here hasn't changed, but where changes have been made, you'll see that in the margin here, there's actually a vertical line. So anywhere that this vertical line appears is essentially something that has been changed in some form. Now, you might think that was quite useful, and if it didn't properly, then of course it would be. But unfortunately, this line exists where any change has been made, and that doesn't necessarily mean that something useful has been changed, because in a lot of cases, it just means that some minor insignificant item has been changed. So here's a couple of examples of that. Now, on this page, you see that there's a mark here, which implies that this title must have been changed and is therefore different from what it said before. But unfortunately, in reality, that's uh, not true at all, because uh, this is what it currently says in the new edition, the 18th. And if I have a look what it said in the uh, previous 17th one, as you can see, it's the same thing, current carrying conductors in AC circuits. It's the same thing. All that's changed is AC is now in capital letters, whereas previously it was in lower case. And that in itself accounts for hundreds of changes throughout this document, because every single place that AC is printed it's now in capital, so that accounts for a change. So that's just one example there. And here's a few more. The changes here, the only change is the fact that the standard numbers here have been amended, so the actual thing itself is the same, it's just simply that these other standards have, of course, been updated. And in here we can see another example of the uh, DC, which of course has uh, uppercase now, and it was of course in lowercase previously, so that's the change there. And then on this pen here, the electric fences item, this has also changed, so you might look at that and well, think, well, obviously it must have been uh, something different. Let's have a look what it said before. So here's the same item in the previous one, so electric fence is covered by this standard, and the actual standard number is exactly the same. The only difference that's occurred here is if you look carefully at this one, after the 7.6 there is a full stop there, and on the new edition the full stop has been taken away. So this uh, vertical line indicating a change is simply the fact that a full stop has been removed. So, of course, that's of no consequence to anyone and completely irrelevant in terms of the context. And unfortunately, throughout the book, minor piffling items like that have been highlighted up with the uh, change indicator here. So, unfortunately, in a lot of cases, the actual markers here are ridiculously irrelevant because uh, nobody cares whether a full stop has been changed or a space has been put in between a uh, percentage sign and some digits and various other completely useless things. So we're not going to be covering any of those, so we're not going to be looking at everything with a change on it. So in this and later videos in this series, you will see a lot of these marks in the side which we're apparently ignoring, and that's simply because the change in question is completely irrelevant, and therefore not even worth mentioning. And a couple of other items which are also not going to be covering is things when the regulation numbers have changed, of course, every other regulation which refers to that has also been changed, simply the fact that a number has been amended. And there's various other things as well, so we're seeing there with, say, the standard numbers for other ones have, of course, amended and changed in various cases. And in some instances, the text is the same, although it may have been rearranged and put into a slightly different order. Or things where it said note something or other may have been called note 1 before, now it's called note 2 and some of the notes may have put into the main body of the text, and so on. So all of those kind of changes are not going to be bothering to look at, because, of course, the actual content is the same. Of course, the arrangement of it may be slightly different, but that doesn't really change its actual meaning or purpose. So let's have a look at some of the real changes which have occurred. And the actual layout, or the plan, of the uh, 18th edition is pretty much the same as it was before, so there's no real surprises there. 
This time we're going to have a look at part one, which says here's the scope object and fundamental principles, and part two, which is essentially the definitions and abbreviations which are used inside. And the other parts are all exactly the same arrangement as before. So in terms of finding things in here, it's exactly the same as in the previous one, but obviously the content may have changed. Now part one, the actual scope of the regulations, or in other words what they actually apply to. Most of this is the same. The uh, main change of note here is down at the bottom. And we can see here that the uh, final item here is onshore units of electrical shore connections for inland navigation vessels. So this has been added in, and there is actually a section in the back of the regulations here in part 7 which applies to that specifically. So that has been added. All the rest of the scope is pretty much as it was before. On the exclusions from the scope, in other words things which this uh, regulations do not apply to, we've got a few uh, amendments here. There are some additional standards have been uh, put in here. But it's basically some of the same kind of context there. And uh, next piece here, previously this was just uh, lift installations, but now it also uh, excludes escalators and moving walkways or moving walk installations. Again, those are covered by these standards here. All of this, that is essentially the same, so it's just really the addition of the uh, moving walkway type installations, which of course are excluded from the scope of these regulations. On the section here, we've got 121 which, uh, as I said here, the standard contains the rules for the design direction and verification of electrical installations. The word verification has been added, so previously it was just design erection of electrical installations. So now it's just adding in that extra part. And here is a change which actually appears in several other areas uh, throughout the publication. And we've got here, the electrical installation shall be designed by one or more skilled persons. Uh, this is a change here. Previously it simply said uh, the electrical installation shall be designed by skilled persons, so now it's one or more, and previously it was skilled persons in the plural, so not a huge amount of change there, it's just really a change to wording. And I say this has been uh, put in in a number of other areas of this document, so uh, something you'll see uh, pretty much throughout the entire thing, this sort of one or more rather than just the uh, individual word. And the final item of relevance in part one is uh, Regulation 13313, as we've got at the bottom here. And the line here indicates what's been added. And the part that's been added starts from here, and it's such use shall be recorded on the appropriate electrical certification specified in part six. And uh, this particular rest of the sentence is exactly the same. And this really regards uh, where it says here where equipment is to be used not in accordance with either this regulation or is used outside the scope of its standard. And it is confirmed that the equipment is at least the same degree of safety as that afforded by compliance with the regulations. So the only difference is now it needs to be recorded on the appropriate electrical certificate, whereas previously it just uh, didn't actually require that. Although I say in most cases it should have been specified on there anyhow, so a bit of a common sense item, just making sure that uh, any deviations from that are actually recorded. Now that's it for part one. Part one is fairly short anyhow, and of course there's not a huge amount that's uh, really changed there, so but just a couple of uh, minor items. So let's now move on to uh, part two. Now part two, as it says here, is the definitions, and the vast majority of these are the same. A certain number have been added, and a couple have got some minor amendments, and at least one has been completely deleted for some reason. So we'll just have a look at the ones which are basically new, and therefore haven't actually existed previously. So first of all we have backup protection, which uh, says here is protection of a device by overcurrent coordination between that device and an overcurrent protective device, or OCPD, in series with it. Generally not necessarily on the supply side. And it says a note here, which has also been added. In the standard, backup protection is not the same as combined short circuit protection. So one uh, extra definition there, and again this is obviously referred to uh, in various other parts of the regulations. Now in common with that, and these are all on this basically the same sort of theme, we have combined short circuit current capability, which is the maximum short circuit current which can be handled by two short circuit protective devices in series. Typically that would be things say like two circuit breakers or two fuses or something similar. We also have combined short circuit protection, which is overcurrent coordination in short circuit condition of two OCPDs, which we saw previously was the uh, overcurrent protective device in series and again resulting in the uh, capability higher than one alone. So the actual concepts of these are not particularly new, but the definitions for them obviously are. We also have conditional short circuit current, which is the uh, perspective current that a circuit or switching device protected by a specified uh, short circuit protective device can withstand for the total operating time and so on. So again, uh, an extra one added in there. 
And again, all this sort of relates together into the same kind of idea there. So nothing particularly new here, it's just that it's been specifically defined with a certain type of definition there. Let's say the idea of having two or more devices, say in series, to increase the level of protection. Certainly nothing new in that. Other new ones we have here is uh, continuity of service. So uh, as the definition states there, we also have a control and protective switching device, or CPS device, which as it says is a switching device or equipment capable of operation other than by hand, so automatic in other words, but with or without manual operating means. And it provides both function of a contactor and the overcurrent protective device. So as you can see, this is all sort of linked together with the same actual concepts and ideas there. And finally, on the same lines, we've got coordination of electrical equipment. So the correct way of selecting electrical devices in series to provide safety and continuity of service of the installation. So again, it's all part of the same rich tapestry. Now something a bit more relevant here in the uh, departure. Deliberate decision not to comply fully with the requirements of this standard, or in other words, the regulations for which the designer must declare that the resultant degree of safety is not less than that achievable by full compliance. Again, this is not a particularly new idea, but it has now been specifically defined. So it's essentially something where, for some reason, if you were designing a system, you've decided not to comply with some part of the regulations here. But uh, in order to actually make sure that's allowable, you would, of course, need to declare that the degree of safety is not actually less. So you can't just say, oh, we're not going to do such and such because we can't be bothered. You can say, well, we're not going to do such and such. However, on the other hand, it is still safe because, and you would have to provide a decent explanation of that. That's also the kind of thing you would need to note on the certificate as appropriate. Now, one that's being deleted is uh, discrimination. It's now called selectivity. And again, that's obviously been added in, in the uh, under the S section. And if you look in the existing regulations, if you look under selectivity, it is in there. But it says selectivity C discrimination. So it's exactly the same thing. It's just changed from discrimination to selectivity. And again, this is another one of these things where the word has been changed throughout the regulations and it is highlighted up with the marker on every single instance of that. Got a whole section here on electric vehicles. And the thing that's new here is the electric vehicle charging equipment, which is an assembly including one or more charging points. And we've also got a number of changes uh, further down to the different types of charging, so mode 2 and 3 and so on. And it continues over the page with uh, mode 4 and vehicle connectors. So uh, quite a lot of amendments here. And in the uh, section here referred to 722, which is the one that's specifically for electric vehicle charging, there are a number of considerable changes there as well. So we'll have a look at that, uh, obviously, in a later episode. Another new item, which has its own Appendix 17 in this case, is energy efficiency. So all of this is new. Now you may notice that uh, with the E section here we're going straight under L and M because what's happened here is these should have been indented because they should actually be under efficiency methods similar to we saw with the uh, electric vehicle section but for some reason they uh, blundered there and just put them in line with the rest. So energy efficiency or efficiency measures and then load shedding is part of that and metering is also part of that as well. And again those are all new and then we just continue with the alphabetical listing with equipment and so on. Uh, this example here, which is a minor change, this existed previously, follow current interrupt rating. The only difference here is it now says able to interrupt without operation of the OCPD, or overcurrent protective device. Previously it was in here with essentially the same wording, and the only difference is the end part, which in the previous edition it simply said interrupt without backup protection. And again, this all fits in with those uh, things we looked at a moment ago, so again, it's a similar idea, but the uh, definitions and sort of context of that have been slightly changed. Now the definition for isolation here, again this was in there before, the main change here is the addition of the words to make dead, as we see here, and those words were not in there previously. So again it's pretty much the same idea, it's just we've got the uh, minor change to the wording there. Here's another new one which is non-compliance, which is a non-conformity that may give rise to danger. So uh, nothing desperately surprising there, but uh, that is now a specifically defined item. And here we have something we've already basically covered, which is the overcurrent protective device, or OCPD, which has it says there is a device provided to interrupt an electric circuit in case the conductor current in the electric circuit exceeds a predetermined value for a specified duration. So again, we're talking about a circuit breaker or fuse or similar device. It's just now called an OCPD rather than what it was called previously. And the note underneath has also a new one in there. It just refers to table A53.1, which gives uh, some additional information. On the same page here, partial selectivity is also new, primarily because, remember, selectivity is what used to be called discrimination. So again, the new definition there for 
partial selectivity. And as I say, it's up to a given overcurrent lower than the braking capacity of the downstream device. Now the definition for residual current device, or RCD, this text here has been slightly altered, but nothing of particular relevance there. It's basically just a rearrangement of a couple of words. The bit that's new are the three notes here, one, two, and three. And they say just explaining pretty much what everybody knew anyhow, such as RCDs include RCC videos and various other items. So those things have been added in, but nothing really has actually changed to that. Another new one here, which is selectivity, which is already seen was what used to be called discrimination. So again, this is all new, but it's basically the same as what discrimination would have been previously. So uh, not too surprising there. And at the bottom here, we've got a few new ones. Short circuit current rating, which is ISCCR. And that's explained in section 534. And that's the maximum uh, perspective short circuit current from the power system for which the surge protective device in conjunction with the OREC current protective device specified is rated. And then this one here, the short circuit current under standard test conditions. Again, this is relevant to PV modules or photovoltaic modules, so the panels, in other words. So a new definition there. And then at the top here, we've got the short circuit protective device, or SCPD, which again all fits in with the previous items. And on the line of surge protective devices, we've got the SPD disconnector, which is a device for disconnecting a surge protective device or part of from the power system. And there's an explanatory note there. Uh, surge protective devices are covered in more detail in a later section, so again we'll look at that uh, note at date. Now if you look down here, you'll see that there's a mark in the margin over here, but uh, if you have to go across, it's not actually in line with anything that's uh, actually printed, so this indicates that something has been deleted. And the thing that's been deleted is the definition for a switch. We've still got switch links and switch disconnector, but apparently switches are no longer a thing, so we don't need to be worried about what they actually are. Now this is what switches used to be called, which as it says there is a mechanical device capable of making, carrying and breaking and so on. So all pretty obvious stuff. But apparently switches are no longer a thing, so uh, of course they've been taken away. Whether that was intentional or not isn't clear, suffice to say it's definitely not in there. And the final new one is total selectivity. And this is selectivity for all overcurrent up to the value of the braking capacity of the downstream device. And again, compare that with the partial selectivity, which of we saw on the previous page. And again, it fits in with the whole idea that it was called discrimination before, and now it's called selectivity instead. Now that's it for the actual definitions themselves. Now there are a few changes within the, say, the symbols section, which is basically all of the uh, symbols for all kinds of different things. Most of these, however, it's just a question of where, say, the regulations that it refers to have been renumbered, so the actual definition of things are pretty much the same, it's just that it refers to some other part because something else got changed. There are a few uh, adjustments and amendments there, but uh, again, nothing of particularly any major concern there. And again, with the abbreviations, there are a few changes here, but uh, pretty much uh, what we had there before. Nothing really too surprising. As I say, the content is uh, basically the same, it just may be that some of the actual regulations that these things refer to may have been changed. What's somewhat more surprising is the mess that's been made in terms of putting these in alphabetical order. Because if we look here, we're starting with A at the top here, and B, and then C, and then we continue with D over here. But then we go from D to C, and then back to D and E, and so on. So why that's not uh, put above that isn't particularly clear. And then it goes down the page, of course, to uh, E, F, and then we have H at the bottom, and then we have P, for some reason, for published document. So uh, a bit of a fail there. And then if we look at the top of this page, we can actually see there at the top we have CPC for circuit protector conductor, and then we're straight back into the H's again. So not really clear why this wasn't put in the C's, because that's where it was in the previous edition. However, in the previous version, this was still in the wrong place, so that's one that's not been corrected, and then inexplicably that's in the wrong order. But there you go. Just shows the uh, care and consideration that was put into preparing this document. Now that's the end of part two. Uh, part three we're not actually going to look through because there isn't really anything there that's changed. There are a few changes indicated in the uh, margin here, but uh, pretty much all of those are just uh, minor changes to the wording. And of course things like we've seen before down here where the uh, letters AC are now in capitals. Previously of course they were in lower case. So obviously there's no point uh, looking through all that. And everything in part three is essentially along those same lines. Part three is fairly short anyhow, so say it's only uh, sort of six or seven page or something length anyway, so nothing uh, particularly useful. And again, some of the other changes that like we've got here, 
the change here is that it wasn't called chapter 46 or section 537 before, so it's just a question of changing numbers or whatever, as other things have been amended. So that's it for this time, and next time we'll have a look at uh, part 4. But until then, thanks for watching.